So first of all, for yours, what was that initial spark? Was it a lyric or a melody for that? Uh, yours was a title. I just, I literally just had the title yours and it was, so I had the lyrics, like basically I was, I was this before you, I was this, I was this, but now I'm yours. You know what I mean? And like, it's just like the tiniest little twist on words. And, you know, as we were talking about it, it was like, you know, uh, Parker, who it, it, I've written all of my number ones with, um, she just kind of like starts going on lyrics and then she'll just toss out ideas. And she was like something about a ship and a bottle and all this stuff. And uh, I feel like we just, I just started saying like, I was a boat stuck in a bottle. Never got the chance to touch the sea. And then it just like one of those other just magical spark moments of just, I mean, the song just went from there. Yeah. And where were you when you found out that one went number one and that was your first? Uh, I was, I was just at home on a normal, surprisingly, I was at home. This was 2017, I think, 17 or 18. And I mean, it was just like, I mean, that, that's the moment you wait for. And you know, all the, especially for your first number one, everybody, everybody, all of your friends who've been cheering you on this whole time, everybody's texting you and, you know, all this stuff. And that's why I love Nashville. That's why I love this community is, man, everybody's so supportive. And so, um, you know, it, I mean, it, this business can get competitive, but it's just like, it's so fun to cheer each other on. And, you know, I still, I still congratulate Thomas Rhett, FGL, Aldine, you know, all my buddies, I still congratulate them. I try to on all their number ones. It's hard to keep up now. For sure it is with all the number ones. So yeah. with Blue Tacoma, is there maybe a fact that fans may be surprised to learn about the creative process or that they don't know? Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, we turned, we wrote the song and it was just like a vocal and like a basically an acoustic and we were like we were excited because we kind of felt this little bit of magic in this song and we turned it in and my team was just kind of like yeah cool and just like kind of brushed past it and we're like oh man that sucks like you know we we feel like there's a little magic in here so I think it was like six eight months later I was, I was texting with Casey and Parker and I was just like, y'all, I cannot get, I can't stop listening. Like I can't stop singing blue Tacoma, California. And so I went in myself and I kind of did my own little demo and, and, and that kind of re sparked that kind of sparked, you know, the, the, com we, we completely rewrote the song, different verses and uh, changed the chorus of, in a big way. And so that was, that was kind of like the, uh, that was kind of the, like the, that spark again, that, that was like, Oh, blue Tacoma, this is a jam. For sure. And with every little thing, were there any rewrites or reproductions on it or how did that come about? Uh, that one was pretty straight up. We didn't finish that song the first day. Um, because, well, we had like the hook, which like the whistle and the banjo, you know, the I just started whistling that like we were just, I think they, I don't even know if he had a beat going or anything. I just started whistling. It was like, <laughs> and Casey was like, yes, yes to that. And so we ended up taking that melody. That's the verse melody. Baby, she's Alabama, Dixieland delight, same melody. And then in the chorus, I just kept, I just kept hearing these big, like, stab, like, bow, 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 bow. and it was like, and I love every little every little and we we're just like that is hooky as heck so like we're rolling with it and we pretty much just wrote the song around that all those kind of elements right there where were you when you found out about number ones and did you do anything to celebrate them oh gosh oh. i know it's hard to think back <laughs> every little mm. i honestly oh i was on tour with lady annabellum when i found out blue tacoma went number one and then every little, I think I was on tour with Thomas Rhett or that tour had just wrapped. Yeah, I think, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's hard to remember. <laughs> do you do anything to celebrate those milestone moments? Have like a go-to I try to, you know, I try. I, uh, for yours, I bought a blazer, a 1978, like K5 blazer. Yeah, that's my baby. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. We like wine for sure. Like there's there's always there's always that bottle of wine that is uh, the celebratory celebratory number one for sure. You gotta open a special one for that. Yeah. And with Love You Like I Used To, maybe there's a secret fans. You haven't really told many people about the song. Fun fact, I mean, I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but I mean, my wife, when we wrote the song, I played it for her and she was just like, um, the title of this, she said, the title of this song is better than the actual song you just played. And I was like, wow, okay, uh, okay appreciate the honesty here. And, uh, but, you know, that was what kind of made us rewrite the entire song too. Like, you know, it doesn't always hit on the first, on the first go around. And a lot of people don't know that. They think you just go write a song and put it on the radio. But, uh, you know, we knew that it wasn't a, it wasn't like a smash and, you know, that's our goal always. And, uh, and so we completely, we were out with Lady A again and uh, just completely rewrote the verses. And we gave it that, the first, we gave it that like twist in the first verse where it sounds like a breakup song. And I mean, the title sounds like a breakup song. And then, and then it goes into just a massive love song chorus. And we were like, yes, there we go. And all my team, you know, they were just like, jaw drop like holy crap this is it and they were like first single off second record done no question so that was fun